Well, it's a disease that impacts millions of people around the world, and Florida has one of the highest concentrations of sickle cell patients in the country. And tonight, our in-depth reporter Anthony Hill is taking a deeper look at this genetic blood disorder and finding out what the state is now doing to expand research and treatment options for patients. So I was diagnosed with sickle cell at the age of one years old. This is Greg Thomas, and he says living with sickle cell anemia has affected him tremendously. Childhood wasn't normal. I had to limit my activities. I couldn't play sports. And I would always want to do what other boys did. I want to play basketball. And um, I couldn't really do that because I was a sick child. Staying hydrated is essential. Half a gallon. I'm almost there. Medical experts say the disease can be unbearably painful for the estimated 100,000 people in the United States living with it. Sometimes it's a sharp pain or like excruciating pain. Greg tells me the pain gets so bad, he often has to go to the hospital. Every three months, every four months. That's why it's important he stays on top of his medication. This is what I take for the sickle cell, hydroxyurea, 500 milligrams, I mean, three capsules in the morning. And I take folic acid also for sickle cell, one tablet a day. And I take oxycodone for pain. I wanted to learn more about this blood disease and how common it is. So I went to Dr. Joanne Ayer's office in Tampa. Her facility specializes in treating patients living with sickle cell. The sickle cell disease is a genetic disease. That means that you don't acquire it, you don't catch it from somebody. Dr. Ayer tells me the red blood cells, which carries oxygen throughout the body, look different in people living with the disease. Instead of them being circular, they're shaped like a sickle, which negatively affects the body's organs. In countries such as Africa and Mediterranean country, countries, sickle cell was a genetic mutation that was protective, and so it survived in those countries. And as a result, you'll see sickle cell disease in people who are of African descent, but also you'll see it in a lot of Hispanic patients. Dr. Ayer says there are currently two cures for the disease. One involves a bone marrow transplant, and the newest one involves a stem cell transplant. Both procedures can be complicated and don't work with everyone. Up in Tallahassee, new legislation passed both the state house and Senate that would fund $10 million yearly on research and expanding treatment options for sickle cell disease. However, the bill still needs to be signed by Governor Ron DeSantis before becoming law. It's the largest investment in sickle cell research I think that in the country right now, uh, and certainly a giant step forward in the state of Florida. I caught up we with State Representative Kelly Skidmore, who co-sponsored the bill along with Representative Fentress Driscoll. The other aspect of the bill allows adults who have been diagnosed with sickle cell to opt into the registry that we created last year that required newborns uh, to be put on the registry. This gives us a broader database from which we can pull um, specific research uh, to help, again, get our arms around this disease in terms of treatment um, and potentially cure. To learn more about sickle cell anemia, head over to our website, abcactionnews.com. In Tampa, I'm in-depth reporter Anthony Hill, ABC Action News.